Welcome back, Talking Sheffield on Sheffield Live TV on a Thursday night. I had a feeling you would be there. Delighted to say Gary Megson is still here as my special guest uh, this week. No James Gregg to round up other events. Uh, that's a feature we will be reinstating. James has had an offer he can't refuse. He's really in uh, gainful employment elsewhere this evening but uh, we do value James's services and we hope to have him back in the studio very soon possibly next week right Sheffield Wednesday mostly is the su subject this hour but just before the break we mentioned Sheffield United the other half I know you won't accept this half business the other half of this sport uh, soccer city uh, they've just changed manager what's your view mm. uh, firstly it's like you know it, it, Nigel's gone in there and it, like, it, it's not worked out because there's so much pressure on whoever goes in at Sheffield United now because they just have to get out of that division. So my view is that that's, that's the unsavoury side of football. Like you, it just looks as if like you're getting 12 months if you don't work out next. Yeah. And it, it's happened, so now you deal with it. But I do happen to think that, they've, um, that this will be good for them because uh, Chris hasn't been at the higher levels. He's coming back to his own club, not just one he played for. Apparently, he supported them and there was two or three other people who did that as well but he supported him <laughs> <laughs> he's got the job he's been ball boy and it's going to mean, mean a huge amount to him and it, I just look at myself when I went back to Wednesday and what it meant and um, you know it, it, there's just that drive that I'm sure he's going to bring to the club now but I think the biggest thing that he'll bring to the club is he'll just make it about results you've just got to get results and like you know the I don't know, this isn't a criticism of anybody else, but when if, if you ever get method in front of result, you're going to struggle. If, you, okay. if you're coming in and you're saying, I know we drew nil-nil, but we did half play some really good stuff, yeah. that's not what you want. You win the games, you get them won, you get themselves going, and I've never known anybody win games, get promotion, and then say, oh, well, we don't really like the football and all that. Mm -hmm. that'll, that'll come later. There's always something that gets you as a, as a yeah. manager. But I just think Chris will just say, right, how are we going to get results? This is how we're going to do it. And I, I think that it'll be, it'll be high-tempo football. I think they'd end up with a, a big centre forward, a small centre forward. It'll be pressing football, set pieces, all the things that, uh, you know, if you can get them going, you will become very difficult to stop. And I used to listen and I used to watch things down at United and you put yourself in the opposition's camp and you think, well, if I was taking a team there, I'd sit deep, let them pass it across, the crowd are going to get frustrated, then we'll try and nick it and they'll get more and more frustrated. And this isn't a criticism of United's crowd, this happens at all big football clubs. And unless you've got the players to pass through a packed de defence, you're going to struggle. Like, you know, and I, I, when I went to Wednesday, I made us big, I made us committed, I made us like play at such a high tempo. I used to put five things on the board that uh, that we had to do. One of which was start high tempo, mm -hmm. and then because of the fitness we had, we could keep it going. I would make us big. I would make us aggressive. Set pieces, no goals going in against us, but we score from them. Mm -hmm. And when you've got that and everybody buys into it, then you take some stuff in. Mm. This is Chris Wilder. He's certainly going to bring bring that an aggressive brand of football, I, I think, to it. Sheffield United mm. didn't play like Sheffield United at Bramall Lane last season. No. And managers do arrive with, this is what I stand for. This is the type of football I like to play. And sometimes, isn't that wrong? They should be looking at what they've got and yeah, adapting yeah, but to it's, it. Uh, that, that's, what you've got to do. that's what management is in any walk of life, not just football. You look at what your workforce but can do. But some do arrive and they say, do. this is the way this, I play. This is what I'm saying about tippy-tappy, like, you know, yeah. where... Uh, a, a pretty famous manager from around these parts knows a, a friend of mine and he said, uh, this was a few years ago, he says, uh, does Maggie want to get back in football? And he, and he says, uh, yeah, I think so. He says, tell him to call the squad a group and start wearing a cardigan, he'll be in in a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, that, that has come over yeah. rather than what you do and how you do it. But when, when you sit down and you get your squad, and you go, right, this is what we've got. How are we going to get the results that we want? If you've got the best passing team in that division, pass it. Mm. If you can do all that, then you've got to do it. But if you haven't, you've still got to get them results somehow. Yeah. And I, I, like, it was part of, you know, sometimes people watch me on the, on the line and think, lunatic. Mm. And I do it myself and I get told off by my wife and you know, <laughs> people like, you behave yourself. Yeah. But 
I don't shout at referees, but what I do is tempo, tempo, keep it going, yeah. get everything up. You get the crowd involved into it, and when you've got Sheffield Wednesday's crowd, that is a big, big plus. Yeah. But if you go out there and start tippy-tapping it about, the, the, the crowd will go flat as well. State. So you lose yeah. an advantage. And then like you're playing a team that's coming to Hillsborough and dropping off, it makes life even more difficult. But if you start at a really high tempo and really tear into the opposition, like Brighton did against Wednesday the other day, it takes a good team to keep you out. Mm. Just before we leave Sheffield United, we will do very shortly. Chris Wilder, a manager on his way up, as you say, has got impetus behind him over 700 games, mm. never been sacked. Mm. I'm going to say, yeah, but let's hope not. Never been sacked. Uh, people think he's a young manager. He's 48. He's just done a very long apprenticeship for this job. Yeah, and he's, and he's, he's done well. He's been down, like, you know, down in the lower divisions. And that's not a criticism. Sometimes it just doesn't happen for you. But like you know, Sheffield United is his club, and I, I would guess that he, you know, if somebody offers him the Manchester United job or the Arsenal job, yeah, great. But I would think after you get out of that those silly realms, his ideal job would be Sheffield United. I'm sure. Okay, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, I've done a column uh, in the Sheffield Telegraph today, and indebted to Gary for one or two comments in there, including one where he described Fernando Forestieri as the best player in the championship. I'm sure there's a lot of agreement to that. Actually, there's been a, a vote among uh, Sky have organised a vote for the PFA Championship Player of the Year, and they had to have a, they, last night they announced F Fernando Forestieri had won it. And embarrassingly today, they said, oh, they've checked the votes. And in fact, Ayala, who's a fine player, defender at Middlesbrough, had won it. There was some cock-up with the, the county. But never, nevertheless, you, your view is going to remain the same, I'm guessing. It, Absolutely it, the same. Well, I don't know how they can do it. Well, first of yeah. all, if you're going to do the vote, get it right. Mm. The, and then afterwards, I, I, I don't want to be rude. He's a decent centre-half. I, I don't think he's the best centre-half in the no. division either, no. Yeah. But... Um, He's a decent centre-half, they've won it, he's done well. It's a lot easier editing it and kicking it out of the back than it is doing the stuff that Forestieri does. Let's look at him, because he's your sort of player, because apart from his range of skill on the ball, his darting runs, his shooting ability, etc., he'd half win that ball back as well. He works his socks off, and he's, like, yeah. he's, he's an all-round footballer, and he, I don't know him, but he looks a really good lad. And some of this rubbish about like you know diving and that, it's people don't die. If, you, if you've got no brains, you don't dive. But if you've got half a brain, you know when uh, when he got sent off at Hull. Yes. Dawson thought he was going without yes. a shadow of a doubt. I wasn't there, but when he looked up and saw what he'd done, he thought he was going off. The hand went yeah. up. He th he was now hoping yeah. I get away with this. There was n I watched it and there was just no thought of what was going to happen. Is that Forest is going? It takes an awful dumbo to see a leg l lunging at you, yeah. you know it's going to hit you uh, like over the knee and you just take it. You've got to dive out of the way. Yeah. And he, he doesn't dive, he sees it, he's sharp as a tack and it's, like, it's ridiculous. It's got to be one of the most extraordinary refereeing decisions I've ever seen. I don't know about you, but it, it's just uh, unbelievable. It, it just never occurred no. that that might be the outcome no. of, what, of that incident. It, it was whether yeah. whether Dawson was going or whether he was going to get away with it, and I'm sure that's what he thought. And then when he saw what was happening, they must have been laughing, laughing up the sleeve. Well, then following that um, game at Hillsborough, there was a he was on the end of a terrific block tackle actually, hmm. and he got booked for diving there as well. Yeah, I know. You know. But it's like it, it, it's gone all the time. Like when you play football, football is like you know sometimes it. Uh, you know, you, you watch it and you do cringe. You see people rolling over and play acting, and mm. you know they're not. But you do know from having played it yourself that when somebody's lunging in at you, you know that, that they're not going to get the ball there. And you, you're left with the choice of, like, do I stand still or do I jump over that leg? Do I dive over that leg? There's nobody in this world who it will stand still and know it's coming and just take yeah. it because it's a human reaction. Get out of the way. Like, and he's, he's so sharp and quick. The, like the ball's gone off the time, and it, uh, he's getting himself a reputation that he doesn't deserve because there's a lot of other people mm. that um, that do similar things, but they're not as good as him. That's a concern not only for the player, but for the manager and the whole team because he is such an important player in this mm. well, this huge game that's coming up. He's, you don't want a referee yeah. to go in there looking for that, do you? You don't, but like, you, and you don't want him thinking about like, well, can I play my normal game? And, and I'm sure he doesn't. But Wednesday's results, when he when he got sent off, were were poor without him because he, yeah. he, he you know, and, and that's not a criticism of the actual club because any team 
would miss a player like that. Mm. And it's not just the, the fact he makes goals and he scores goals and he buzzes around the back. He also gets hold of the ball that enables you to get yourself up the pitch, that enables you to set yourself how, how you want to be set. If you haven't got that kind of player in your team, then you're going to be struggling a little bit. Mm. Well, Sheffield Wednesday have been very, very consistent for a long time now. Mm. You can't say that about Hull City, despite the outstanding individuals that they've got. And that seems mm. to be a, a big difference between them coming into this game. It does. And I think, um, you know, I, I'm sure Steve, although he's like, he, he would never say so, and I know him quite well, um, he would never say that he's disappointed in it. But the players that he's got, and when they can, when, you know, when they, they really click, yeah. they're the best team in there, I think, in terms of team. But I think they've also, because they will know that they're the best mm -hmm. team, and that like, I, I would imagine that you know, near enough everybody in his squad would expect to be playing the football in the Premiership. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once, once they go down, it's a little bit difficult, and it's, it's like, you know, you don't want to be critical of his team because they've done well to get where, the, where they've got to. But I just look at it and, and think that them being in the playoffs is entirely different to Wednesday being the, in the playoffs. A whole, whole, in my view, should have, should have got themselves up with the players they've got and the manager. And that's no criticism of Steve because right. he's, he's a good mate of mine and Mickey Phelan is. It's a criticism of the players. They, they should have got them up. He's a realist. He's also very, very honest in interviews, and I reckon he'd accept that privately. I, I pretty well know him fairly well myself, yeah. and uh, and he would be disappointed in some of those players not being so consistent. Yeah, and, and but you, it is difficult because it's like you know I'd, I've done both sides myself as a manager. We we, we went up at um, at West Brom, yeah. and then the players have a, a a season there, and it's suddenly well, we're Premiership now. And right. it's really difficult, and you can't do it. So well, hang on a minute, we're, you failed Premiership. We all are. I'm yeah. a failed Premiership manager. You're failed Premiership players. We're back in the Championship. Yeah. This is where we deserve to be. And we went down. The best result didn't seem so at the time, but the best result I got as manager of West Brom when we got relegated was the first game of the season. We got beat 4-1 at Walsall, and I give them the biggest tearing of a strip. It was, I, I give myself that like, nearly went unconscious, a lack of oxygen, because I just went bananas at them. But as it turned out, it was a good result because we, yeah. I think we won seven on the trot after that. Yeah. And it just like, you know, just set everything right. That's, yeah. that's finished now, now we go. And we got, and as I say, we got promoted with four games left. You're saying to me, uh, for, the, for the newspaper column, that you thought the big players of Hull would turn up, would perform at Wembley. Yeah. So, does this, uh, can you call it? Uh, how are we calling this, this game and this result? Um, no, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I don't think no. anybody could look at that and say, right, the result go this way. Because, like, you know, I, I thought that um, the game was over when they beat Derby 3 0, and then it ended up as it did. Yeah. You know, that, that, if you'd have asked me the question before that, I'd say, oh, I'd, like, Wednesday's really going to have to go some to beat Hull because of mm. the players they've got. But they didn't turn up again. And, and when push came to shove, they didn't have it to uh, to, no. to kick on against Derby, but Wednesday did, when, did. because yeah. Brighton really tore into Wednesday, and Wednesday rode the luck at times. But then eventually, like they, they, they come on and they get you know the result in the end was a, probably a fair result in overall. But the first half an hour, if they'd have scored again, it would have been entirely different. And yeah. you know the Wednesday can bang it up there to Nui. He gets hold of it, calms it down a little bit, and it's uh, it's it's a good foil to have. They can change the way they play, can't they? Bring yeah. him on. Yeah, he's good at that because like you, you yeah. can't just ignore him because of the size and the stature of the guy, and you know he gets a lot of criticism, but he can play, mm. you know, in in his manner. And if you u utilize that in the right way, he's a he's a good player to have. But like if you start sticking it up there, even if the centre halves are winning the ball, they won't be heading it back 40 yards because like they'll have to get above him, so they'll start dropping it into the middle of the park. A couple of players from your day, just to discuss with you. Jose Semedo, who is still there. Uh, everybody loves him, loves what he stands for within the club. And whether he plays or not, he obviously makes a contribution behind the scenes. Mikel Antonio, I'll just throw at you your first. Cause I think he might have been your last signing at Wednesday. He came in just before the derby, didn't he? You got him on yeah. loan. Yeah. OK. Uh, <laughs> as, a, as a winger, because you, you tried all season to get Ben Marshall, or most of the season. Couldn't, for whatever reason. And he brought Antonio in. What a player he's turned out to be. Yeah, and, and he's one of those that you're pleased for because he's got no edge to him. And it happens quite a lot. I like signing players who have been non-league players and have had to work for a living as well as play the football. I signed Jeff Horsfield as well, exactly the same. 
he didn't take being a footballer for granted. He gave it everything that he's got, and he was a good player. And uh, Michael Antonio was exactly the same. You know, he, um, <clears throat> I, I saw him play. I think I first saw him at, uh, at Cheltenham, and then um, we played Colchester at Hillsborough, and he was playing outside right. And um, for some reason, I don't know why, the, the, the manager brought him off, and I, I remember saying to Chris Evans, oh, "Go for that," <laughs> because I thought he was their biggest threat to us on that day. We turned him over. And, um, and obviously he was on loan, I said, we'll, we'll do it as and when we can. And, um, you know, I know you don't like me saying it because you get in trouble, but I, w I wanted to sign him. He was told, no, we I'm can't sign him. You, did, right. you didn't want to sign yeah, him. Yeah, we bring him in on loan. But, you know, the, the, these things were, were difficult for me at the time because like, you, you've said, like, we've gone over it. We, we haven't, we haven't. I, I knew I was going two months before I went there. And these things were happening all the time. You knew you were leaving. I, I knew I was on the ro you were on still rocky. Yeah, yeah, it was rocky for me because, yeah. like, you know, the things were happening, it was ridiculous. I, as James O'Connor, uh, he's not everybody's cup of tea, but James O'Connor had a 91% win rate with Sheffield Wednesday. He played nine times out of ten, we won. And I could play him outside left, outside right, in the middle. He'd give it everything he'd got. In the dressing room was a diamond, yeah. like Samedo. And I said, like, let's sign him for the rest of the season because he'd only taken a six-month contract. And he says, I'll show you what I can do. I thought that was brilliant, typical of his attitude. Give him the rest of the time. Um, the powers that be at Wednesday forgot, mm. they said. These things were happening all the time. Ben Marshall, we can't do that. Uh, Lafondra giving me a price that was double what he eventually went for. And these players weren't coming into the place. And then Antonio, no, we'll do it on loan. The, the place was built on free transfers and loans, and he was one of the better ones. The only, the only, the only thing against him, you, you know, <laughs> when you turn up to sign for a new club or in any walk yeah. of life, I would imagine you're smart, you put a shirt on or something. You would have thought so. Antonio, I'd never seen one before, and anybody who was over four years old, a black and white onesie. <laughs> <laughs> And you still signed it. <laughs> still signed it. He's a great Despite lad, that. but he was, you know, if you're quick, you'll be quick in the second division, you'll be quick in the Premier League. If you're strong, same applies. Yeah. And he's getting better and better, but he's, he's just a really good lad. There aren't many Premiership players where you could say, right, I know you're an outside right, but go and play right back for us and give it everything you've got. He's good in the air. He's, he's got a long throw. He's got a lot of things going for him, but the biggest thing he's got going for him, he's got absolutely no edge and just gives it everything he's got. He's a great lad. Certainly going very well for West Ham, and yeah. you'll be taking a bit of satisfaction from that, having yeah, it's always, it and... Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's not like that. It's, um, you know, you like to see, like, one of the best pro, or one of the best pros I've ever worked with was Gary Cahill. He's a yeah. good, good player. But when players like that get on, like he's done, you know, European yeah. Cup winners and Premier League, they're the ones that you, you want to get on. And it's like, you know, one of the things, like, when I took Gary, I used to watch and think like there's there's three Sheffield lads in in England's back four, and Wednesday end had one of them, you yeah. know, and it's got to shape up like because yeah. it's um, you know that is a big part of, uh, of of your club and getting it going forward is your youth side of it. You tend to prioritise English signings, uh, English players, mm. but Jose Semedo was one of your most your key key men, and I, I know you had a battle to get him. Uh, you really did, didn't you? Oh, you had yeah. to battle to get him. Mm. Uh, and can you have envisaged not just the impact he's made within the team, mm. but the emotional impact he's made among the supporters as well? Um, yeah, because I think support, that's, that's why I wanted to bring, I, I, I met um, Samido, I can't remember what date exactly, but it was really early in May. And one of the things that I started doing as a manager is rather than getting the player, if I could do, rather than getting the player to come up, I would go and put a bit of effort in and go and see them. So I, I, I jumped on the train, went and spoke to Samido. He's there with his, uh, his interpreter. But Jose could speak decent enough English anyway. And um, he just had an enthusiasm, and, and he's really polite and a nice, nice guy. Yeah. But he gives it everything that he's got. And if, if you saw him the way he goes about his work, it wouldn't surprise you that he's the same person. He's, he lifts weights every day. You have to drag him out of the, uh, out of the, like, you know, the weights room. And he's got a bit of person. I was in there one day, and I'm doing weights. And he says, oh, that's not bad, that. He says, my sons do that. <laughs> but he's, Age three and Yeah, five. yeah. But he's a, he's a really good lad, and you want... Because even if he's not playing, he's exactly the same as when he is playing. Yeah. And, like, he's just... 
got a great personality, gives it everything that he's got. And, you know, I just wouldn't move on from him because, like I said, I saw him at the beginning of, uh, of, of May. I don't think we signed. We were over in Austria when, when I actually signed him, which was like, you know, middle of July. But I just would not move on because I just wanted to get it done. And for every excuse I was getting told we can't do it, I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not moving on. So if we can't do it, we'll end up with nobody. And it was, it became a, a game of chicken of who, who would swerve first. And you know, I was delighted that we got him because Wednesday needed that kind of player because mm. we had players who. I don't know, they gave me the impression that they were doing Wednesday a favour rather than the other way. Yeah. And then, like, you know, when I signed, I, I was signing players basically from lower division re reserve teams. You know, yeah. Rob Jones was in, in Scunthorpe's reserve. So we, we got him on a free. We got Danny Barr uh, on, uh, on loan. We got Omit, uh, Jose uh, Samido on a, on a free. And we needed to do it like that. And one of the things that we did, and I used to say to the players when, when I took them, uh, what do you think we go running around um, Grenaside for on a Tuesday? And it was on fitness. And it's not. It's not f fitness is part of it. What it is, is if I know I can get them running through, and there was some awful weather up there at times, if yeah. I know I can get them to run in there and they'll give it everything that they've got, what are they going to do in front of 25,000 people at Hillsborough? You yeah. know what you're getting from them. And if I asked people who did they think were the two or three who just wouldn't bother, they'd probably get that right as well through watching yeah. them on that pitch. And well, you know, we, we did it, and you're not looking for the best runner. You're looking for the one who gives it everything that he's got. He might not be the best runner, but he gives it everything. You might have your best runner can't be bothered at the back, and they're the ones that you need to get out of your team eventually. Char character test. Uh, yeah. Dave Ponchansiri, we've not mentioned, even though he deserves an enormous amount of credit, the money's gone in just like he said it would. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that if God is good and the owls do go up, that he's mm. going oh, he's, he's to push been, the boys um, out again, yeah? He's been brilliant for Wednesday. I wish I'd worked for him because he, he's, he, he looks that kind of chairman that is a manager's dream. That, like, look, this is from the outside looking in now. Yeah. That he puts the money in, he knows what he wants, he lets people work, lets them do what, what, what they want because that's their expertise, and then judges it from there. But. You know, I'm not going to go down the same road that I did last time, but he looks like a proper chairman to me. Okay, and uh, Carlos Carvalho looks a proper man. They don't call him manager, they call him head coach. But actually, since the transfer committee went, which I, I think was the right thing to do, to ditch it, he's acted like a manager. Everything goes through him in Is terms it, of recommendations. I'd, I'd like to know what a head coach doesn't do that the manager does then, because it's the same thing, it's just a title. Yeah, yeah. and talking of titles, your title at the moment, between jobs, I don't know, what, no, wh whatever. No, you, you're happy because you've had a great career. Any offers to go back? Any desire to go I back? Had, uh, um, to the right place, I would do it. And I do, and I do miss it. And that's why yeah. I have to go, right, I don't bother with it in, in terms of going to games and stuff like that. Um, somebody rang me up from Scotland, an agent the other day, would have been interested in a job there. And, no, because like it, it, things change for you. You know, when uh, my, my first job, proper job in, in management, I lived in Norwich and Blackpool offered me the job. Mm. And it's a four hour journey there and it, it was an awful journey as well. So, but you have to do it. As you get on a little bit, it's... Um, you do you know what the worst thing is? Got 24 seconds left. All oh, right. <laughs> and that breaks my heart because we've only just scratched the surface. You have to come back. <laughs> for the third time, Gary. Thanks so much for coming in again. Really, no, really enjoy enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being there. We'll be back with more guests next week, uh, 11 p.m. Repeat, or this will be on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Sometimes people watch me on the on the line and think you're lunatic, mm. and I do it myself, and I get told off by my wife and you know <laughs> people like you behave yourself. I, yeah. But I don't shout at referees. But what I do is tempo, tempo, keep it going, yeah. get everything up. You get the crowd involved into it, and when you've got Sheffield Wednesday's crowd, that is a big, big plus. Yeah. But if you go out there and start tippy tapping it about, the the, the crowd will go flat as well. The, so you lose yes. an advantage, and then like you're playing a team that's coming to Hillsborough and dropping off. It makes life even more difficult, but if you start at a really high tempo and really tear into the opposition, like Brighton did against Wednesday the other day, it takes a good team to keep you out. Mm. Just before we leave Sheffield United, we will do very shortly. Chris Wilder, a manager on his way up, as you say, he's got impetus behind him, over 700 games, mm. never been sacked. Mm. I'm going to say yet, yeah, but let's hope not. Never been sacked. 
Uh, people think he's a young manager. He's 48. He's just done a very long apprenticeship for this job. Yeah, and he's and he's, he's done well. He's been down like you know down in the lower divisions, and that's not a criticism. Sometimes it just doesn't happen for you. But like you know, Sheffield United is his club, and I, I would guess that. He, you know, if somebody offers him the Manchester United job or the Arsenal job, yeah, great. But I would think after you get out of that, those silly realms, his ideal job would be Sheffield United, I'm sure. Okay. Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, I've done a column uh, in the Sheffield Telegraph today and indebted to Gary for one or two comments in there, including one where he described Fernando Forestieri as the best player in the championship. I'm sure there's a lot of agreement to that. Actually, there's been a, a vote among uh, Sky have organised a vote for the PFA championship. And there was two or three other people who did that as well, but he supported him. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the job, he's been ball boy, and it's going to mean, mean a huge amount to him. And it, I just look at myself when I went back to Wednesday and what it meant. And, um, you know, it, it, there's just that drive that I'm sure he's going to bring to the club now. But I think the biggest thing that he'll bring to the club is he'll just make it about results. You've just got to get results. And, like, you know, the... I don't know, this isn't a criticism of anybody else, but when if, if you ever get method in front of result, you're going to struggle. If, you, okay. if you're coming in and you're saying, I know we drew nil-nil, but we did half play some really good stuff, yeah. that's not what you want. You win the games, you get them won, you get themselves going, and I've never known anybody win games, get promotion, and then say, oh, well, we don't really like the football and all that. Mm -hmm. that'll, that'll come later. There's always something that gets you as a, as a yeah. manager. But I just think Chris will just say, right, how are we going to get results? This is how we're going to do it. And I, I think that it'll be, it'll be high-tempo football. I think they'd end up with a, a big centre-forward, a small centre-forward. It'll be pressing football, set pieces, all the things that, uh, you know, if you can get them going, you will become very difficult to stop. And, I used to listen and I used to watch things down at United and you put yourself in the opposition's camp and you think, well, if I was taking the team there, I'd sit deep, let them pass it across, the crowd are going to get frustrated, then we'll try and nick it and they'll get more and more frustrated. And this isn't a criticism of United's crowd, this happens at all big football clubs. And unless you've got the players to pass through a packed de defence, you're going to struggle. Like, you know, and Welcome back, Talking Sheffield on Sheffield Live TV on a Thursday night. I had a feeling you would be there. Delighted to say Gary Megson is still here as my special guest uh, this week. No James Gregg to round up other events. Uh, that's a feature we will be reinstating. James has had an offer he can't refuse. He's really in uh, gainful employment elsewhere this evening. But uh, we do value James's services and we hope to have him back in the studio very soon, possibly next week. Right, Sheffield Wednesday mostly is the su subject this hour, but just before the break, we mentioned Sheffield United, the other half, I know you won't accept this half business, the other half of this sport, uh, soccer city. Uh, they've just changed manager. What's your view? Mm. Um, firstly, it's like, you know, it, it, Nigel's gone in there and it, like, it, it's not worked out because there's so much pressure on whoever goes in at Sheffield United now because they just have to get out of that division. So my view is that that's, that's the unsavoury side of football. Like you, it just looks as if like you're getting 12 months if you don't work out next. Yeah. And it, it's happened, so now you deal with it. But I do happen to think that, they've, um, that this will be good for them because uh, Chris hasn't been at the higher levels. He's coming back to his own club, not just one he played for, apparently he supported him. Player of the year, and they had to have a... They, last night they announced F Fernando Forestieri had won it, and embarrassingly today, they said, oh, they've checked the votes, and in fact, Ayala, who's a fine player, defender at Middlesbrough, had won it. There was some cock-up with the, the county. But never, nevertheless, your, your view is going to remain... The same, I'm guessing. It, Absolutely it, the same. Well, I don't know how they can do it. Well, first of yeah. all, if you're going to do the vote, get it right. Mm. The, and then afterwards, I, I, I don't want to be rude. He's a decent centre-half. I, I don't think he's the best centre-half in the no. division either, no. Yeah. But um, he's a decent centre-half. They've won it. He's done well. It's a lot easier editing it and kicking it out the back than it is doing the stuff that Forestieri does. Let's look at him because he's your sort of player because apart from his range of skill on the ball, his darting runs, his shooting ability, etc. 
he'd an half win that ball back as well. He works his socks off, and he's like yeah. he's, he's an all-round footballer. And he, I don't know him, but he looks a really good lad. And some of this rubbish about like you know diving and that, it's people don't. Die. If, you, if you've got no brains, you don't dive. But if you've got half a brain, you know when uh, when he got sent off at Hull. Yes. Dawson thought he was going. Without yes. a shadow of a doubt, I wasn't there, but when he looked up and saw what he'd done, he thought he was going off. The hand went yeah. up. He, th he was now hoping, yeah. I get away with this. There was n I watched it and there was just no thought of what was going to happen is that Forest is going. It takes an awful dumbo to see a leg l lunging at you. Yeah. You know it's going to hit you uh, like over that. I, when I went to Wednesday, I made us big, I made us committed. I made us like play at such a high tempo. I used to put five things on the board that uh, that we had to do. One of which was start high tempo, and then because of the fitness we had, we could keep it going. I would make us big. I would make us aggressive. Set pieces. No goals going in against us, but we score from them. Mm. And when you've got that, and everybody buys into it, then you take some stuff in. Mm. This is Chris Wilder. He's certainly going to bring bring that an aggressive brand of football, I, I think, to it. Sheffield United mm. didn't play like Sheffield United at Bramall Lane last season. No. And managers do arrive with, this is what I stand for. This is the type of football I like to play. And sometimes, isn't that wrong? They should be looking at what they've got and adapting yeah, but to it's, it. Uh, that, that's, what you've got to do. that's what management is in any walk of life, not just football. You look at what your workforce but can do. But some do arrive and they say, do. this is the way this, I play. This is what I'm saying about tippy-tappy, like, you know, yeah. where... Uh, a, a pretty famous manager from around these parts knows a, a friend of mine and he said, uh, this was a few years ago, he says, uh, does Maggie want to get back in football? And he, and he says, uh, yeah, I think so. He says, tell him to call the squad a group and start wearing a cardigan, he'll be in in a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, that, that has come over yeah. rather than what you do and how you do it. But when, when you sit down and you get your squad, and you go, right, this is what we've got. How are we going to get the results that we want? If you've got the best passing team in that division, pass it. Mm. If you can do all that, then you've got to do it. But if you haven't, you've still got to get them results somehow. Yeah. And I, I, like, it was part of, you know,